Hello and welcome to the big picture. The debate over providing job opportunities for the SC and ST in the private sector has been on for several years now. The UPA government has once again started taking steps to rope in the private sector, though its past efforts have not yielded the kind of results it expected. The renewed effort aims at getting the corporate sector to take on itself the responsibility to impart the right skills to the SC and ST youths in some of the states which has a dominant population from these communities so that they can become employable in not just the low end but also the high end jobs in the corporate sector. A five year plan is being worked out at the PMO level to train 1 million SC and ST youths and ensure employment to them in the corporate sector. The corporate sector however is yet to show similar enthusiasm as that of the government. How far this effort will succeed? What does the corporate sector expect to make the government's proposal a success? What are the skills that are to be imparted to the SC and ST youths? Is this affirmative action of the government going to be a game changer for the SC and ST youths in this country? We will discuss all this while asking the question how far the program to impart skills and finding jobs for SC and ST youths in the private sector will be successful. To discuss this, I have with me today Mr. Prasad Srivella, General Secretary of the National Campaign for Dalit Human Rights and uh, others will be joining us very soon. And on the phone line is Mr. J.D. Seelam, a Congress MP in the Rajya Sabha. Welcome to both of you. Uh, let me go to Mr. Seelam first. Uh, Seelam, this, this plan of the government, this plan of the government has been on for quite some time now. In fact, as soon as the UPA came to power in the first time, in 2004, they, you, people started talking about this in the private sector, about, you know, job representation in the private sector. But not much progress has been made so far. Why do you think it has happened like that? Yeah, um, uh, you know, good evening, good evening uh, Mr. Prasad, good evening, Mr. Nikam. My, uh, I don't think uh, the, the process has, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, has not been, uh, what do you say, ex I mean, more expeditious than this because it is a process. It's not an event. We need to talk to different, uh, you know, interest groups. I think uh, instead of, you know, posting them, it's better to take them on board. I'm happy to say, you know, it, there is a lot of change from the corporate sector. And now with the government's uh, initiative, I think uh, the objective of, you know, quality reservation, uh, apart from quantity reservation, you know, in uh, 1961, Gajendra Gatkar said, the Dalits in this country deserve to be, you know, qualitatively represented, not right. quantitatively. Right. I think that's coming to a reality. I'm happy that the government has uh, taken special measures. I'm sure we will be able to sort of, you know, achieve uh, the very good results. You know, this, uh, the government is, seems to be having some plan to impart skills for the, it expects the corporate sector to take up the responsibility to impart skills. How far do you think yeah. this will be successful? Now there is a mission, the National Council for Skill Development. And uh, in fact, I had uh, interaction with uh, some of them. And they need to do a little more because it's not yet uh, focused on uh, ESC, ESC, because we have a number of... Uh, People, we have the, but little bit of you know rounding up the you know rough edges is required because corporate sector these guys when they go uh, because I have done some a little bit in my constituency uh, at the lower level right. like for instance the degree fail candidates and then I pick them up to use the government program and then give them English speaking skills etc. It needs to be done little with passion you know not a program mode. But as a commitment, it should be done with a passion. I think the NCDS, the national uh, NSDC, the National Skill Development Council, need to take some special, uh, specialized people uh, who are working with the Dalits so that they understand the, you know, the psychometric uh, problems associated with training them to be suited uh, for the corporate sector. You know, with all the, you know, there will be a, a cultural transformation in some cases. Okay. We have people who have excelled economically. We have people who have excelled, you know, um, their educational uh, area. But they need to be oriented 
towards working for the corporate sector. I think that is uh, one of the challenges. Apart from identifying the right people and putting them to the right course, that needs to be a lot of preparatory work needs to be done. Okay. I think the National Skill Development Council needs to orient uh, uh, themselves for this task. Okay. Okay, you stay on, uh, Silam, will, I'll come back to you. We are now joined by Professor Sukhdev Thorad, former Chairman of the University Grants Commission, and Dr. Santosh Marotra, Director General of the National Institute for Applied Manpower Research. Welcome to both of them. Let me go to Mr. Thorad, uh, Professor Thorad. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, the, there is this new, renewed effort by the, by the UPA government to, you know, rope in the uh, corporate sector, so that the CST youths are, you know, given the right kind of skills. Uh, you know, it, this, this, this measure, this was started at least eight years back. I remember when the UPA government, UP, the UPA 1 came, came into power first time. They had started talking about this. But there seems to have been not much progress so far on that score. And why do you think it has happened? Well, I think, let me say first thing that uh, the government of India really took a very positive in initiative to... Uh, make the private sector agree uh, to have an, some sort of an affirmative action policy uh, in the four sphere, education, employability, uh, promoting enterprises, and uh, of course, promoting the recruitment uh, in the Government pri sector. private sector. In the private sector. Private sector. Uh, but it is a voluntary and self-regulatory policy. Right. There is no legal dimension. Uh, it's all depend on the moral commitment of these three associations, that is FIKI, uh, CII and Associate and Chamber of Commerce. Uh, now, uh, we do not know much what is the nature of the progress, but Indian Institute of Delhi study with which I am associated to can uh, did a study. And, yeah, I have seen yeah, your study. Yeah. Uh, now, there it comes comes out that the, the voluntary character of the affirmative action policy is not really working. Right. Now, let me give you some statistic. For example, if we take CII, Confederation of Indian Industry, they have 7,000 direct members and 90,000 indirect members. Right. Now, CII and others have laid down the courts for them with respect to the affirmative action policy and they, under, they sign those and then the affirmative action is followed. Now, out of the 7,000 direct members, only 690 members have really signed the code. Okay. And out of that 690 members, only 32 of them, uh, well, only 103 of them really have undertaken measure in affirmative action policy, okay. which in other words means that only 10% of the members have signed the code and only 15% uh, of those who have signed have uh, taken any action. Right. Now, same is the story with the Associate Chamber of Commerce. Uh, only 50 f uh, out of the 4 lakh direct and indirect members, only 54 of them have signed. Uh, and that accounts to less than 1% of the total members. So, generally the... And the, FIKI, in fact, there are no figures available. On there are no figures available. So, what you can discover is that the coverage who have committed for this code with respect to affirmative action policy is extremely uh, less. So, the voluntary nature of the affirmative action policy or commitment is not really... So, the, the, the latest uh, effort of the government in the last couple of months, they have been holding meetings with... Uh, all these chambers of, you know, the industry uh, associations. Um, now, the, the the corporate sector seems to be wanting to wanting some kind of a commitment from the. What kind of commitments do they uh, think you you think the government can give to them? Well, I, I really don't know about the oh. about the commitment. Uh, uh, if it is if it relates to the concession with respect to tax, or it's a commitment that the affirmative action policy should not be made legal, it should continue to remain voluntary and self-regulatory. But I think voluntary and self-regulatory, in, in very rarely uh, the, character, uh, the policies are voluntary and self-regulatory. But if it has to be voluntary and self-regulatory, there are some of the action programs which have been taken by CIA. They are quite good and encouraging. Yes. But what I'm saying is that if it has to be creditable, then the then the voluntary character of the it should reflect in a larger acceptance of the this affirmative action policy by all the members, direct uh, and indirect. Uh, San, Dr. Santosh Mehrotra, uh, what is your you know? I'm sure you you must have done a lot of work on this and know what what is what are the findings of yours? Where where, where are the problems when it comes to uh, you know find this SCST youths finding jobs in corporate sector or in private private sector? Not necessarily just corporate sector. 
Well, we've got a generalized problem of youth finding jobs in the first place. Right. I mean, let's start with what is happening in with non-agricultural employment in one of the fastest growth periods of our of our country's history. Manufacturing employment has actually declined and services employment has barely grown at all. You know, it's, it's so so we've all, we have a situation if employment itself is not rising outside of agriculture, it's rising only in construction. Mm. Uh, it's not an environment very conducive to for co affirmative action, much as we all support affirmative action. The second problem is that that Professor Thorat raised about the employability. Right. All youth and SCST youth even more than other youth suffer the problem of employability and there are two essential fundamental constraints. One is that uh, children in large numbers are still not completing eight years of compulsory education and SCST children in particular are not. The second level of problem arises that we just do not have the institutional capacity either in the government sector or in the private sector to provide vocational training, vocational education and the skill development that is necessary for them to be employable uh, youth of all kinds, not right. just as CSC children, uh, employable in manufacturing or in uh, services. So, of course, uh, Mr. Seelam was right in saying that the government has taken action and there is a skill development, national skill development mission. But the national skill development mission is quite, it's, it's in an incipient stage. The National Skill Development Corporation, which is massively a, a, a increasing capacity in the private sector for skill development, and it has done excellent work, sterling work in the last two years. It's still, you know, providing skill training in the private sector for barely, I think, 118,000 people. Mm. So we've got a long way to go. That's, I think, that's the fundamental problem. A, okay, uh, let me come to Prasad. Uh, Mr. Prasad, uh, what is what has been your experience? All these, uh, like Santosh Merotra was just now saying, it is not just not reached two years of skill development. It has not reached anywhere. Last eight years, we have been watching the the government try, you know, making very tentative steps to ask to ask the corporate sector obviously private sector is not interested in uh, in being imposed some kind of an affirmative action what has been the experiences you you people have gone through so first of all let me welcome this uh, the government of india's dis decision on imparting the skills on scst youth mm. but one thing is we have to keep in mind the right to equality won't come mere imparting the skills because the cost is an important fact de determinant factor for social, political, corporate and power relations in this country. And uh, there is a discrimination in hiring. There is a differential treatment, even the premium of wa wages. Right. And, and there, is, there is the atrocities when the people are asking, questioning this kind of a, a discrimination and differential wages. So until unless we'll take it as a as a, a right to equality, the two providing. I I want to bring to your notice two things, and I'm sure you you are aware of it. I want you to talk about that. One is the uh, the, the proposal to have an equal employment opportunities opportunities act. One second thing is the the company's bill, the present company's bill, talks about two percent of the profit being put into the CSR. Corporate social responsibility, which should include this, this also. That's what they talk about. You think these are two measures which can help? So, if if it is make it as a legal right, right, then it definitely it, it is a long. It's like it's uh, uh, helps the community a longer way. Yeah. If it's not on the, if it continues on the voluntary basis, so right to equality cannot be achieved by mere imparting the skills among the communities. Okay. We will uh, add this, uh, we will we'll go into a short break. We'll come back and discuss this crucial aspects of, you know, Equal, Empo Equal uh, Employment Opportunities Act and other other things which can make this, this uh, uh, attempt to the government more successful. Please keep watching. We'll be back very soon.
welcome back. We are discussing the, the skill development and also the job representation for SCST youths in the private sector. Let me go back to uh, Mr. Seelam. Seelam, yeah. Seelam th there are two things which uh, Prasad uh, raised, you know. It is this voluntary, volunt you also spoke about it earlier, voluntary, uh, voluntarily, we would, we, he says we cannot expect the, both, even Prasad Sarant was talking about that. So you, what about this Equal Employment Opportunities Act? How far you people have been able to convince the government about the need for such an act, uh, you know, which can, which can put some pressure on the private sector? I think, uh, you know, the, the initial, uh, uh, you know, reluctance is, is, is passed now, the, the corporate sector. Most of the corporate sector is willing. Now this is only how to sort of, you know, formalize the relation. I agree, uh, you know, I, I had, in fact, when I was working in Bangalore, I tried, I contacted and got some very, very brilliant uh, Dalit uh, engineers uh, getting into the important uh, the, the IT, IT sector. sector. But what happened... Now, what happened, I tell you, I agree with, uh, you know, Prasad Ji when he said, once, you know, they got in, after that, they started sort of finding ways and ultimately they were asked to get out. You know, this is uh, uh, getting into, uh, the, the, there is also this uh, prejudicial treatment. Then they said, sir, they will not be able to do much. I said, they take a re-interview. They were, why did you ask them to go? Then I had to fight. Then they agreed. And now they are saying, they're doing very nicely. I mean, my point is, unless you really get the commitment out, how do you get that commitment? By convincing, by act, by force. Now, these the, the modalities, how we can do that. It can't be, you know, it depends on the, 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 the uh, industry to industry. As Santoshji said, as such, the, the jobs are dwindling. You know, even if the dwindling uh, is there, but the proportionately, the, even right. today, all the big industries have not started. Right. Only some some beginning is made. I, that's why I said the National Skill Development Corporation should have a separate wing. They do not have the focus on SCST. So I would like uh, the uh, Secretary General of the Forum of SCST MPs. We are 165 in number. Right. So the forum is demanding the government that there should be a separate wing in the National Skill Development okay. Corporation take care of this and then yes there should be this formality of you know making it compulsory and also i have uh, experienced this two percent of csr yes. csr is a very good uh, instrument we can bring a lot of for change for training and improving their you know capacity building functional abilities the the, the manage general you know cultural transformation i was finding it more right. and more right. because right. the english speaking all that so i think we need to do so many things. So okay. We made it beginning. It's a welcome thing. Okay. Uh, Professor Turat, yeah. uh, you know, w this Equal Employment Opportunities Act, is this something which is a viable thing? And do you think this will this will be one of the solutions to the to the problems? No, we have gone far beyond the Equal Opportunity Act, please. I mean, India is one of the most leading countries. Equal as Employment Opportunity yeah, yeah. Act. We, uh, I mean, but, you know, just now we heard what Silam is saying. No, no, no. Reserva about reservation in public sector. Public sector, fine. Right. Go, uh, go, goes much beyond the Equal Opportunity Act. Absolutely. We're talking of the private sector. Yeah, I, I would like to raise two issues with respect to the employment, equal uh, uh, employment opportunities. Equal op employment opportunity is a facilitating provisions. Right. But what is uh, the, the problem of Dalit is uh, twofold. One is, as Santuji has rightly mentioned, is the lack of skill. Yeah. Lot, not very many of them have a skill which, which, uh, which is demanded in the market. So first problem is to capacity building, give them the skill. And I think National Skill Development Corporation is one of the most important initiatives taken by MHRD, whereby they identified 40 trades which are in demand in, uh, in the economy. And that will help. But the problem of Dalit is of a dual nature. One is to promote skill, so supply side you uh, increase the uh, supply and remove the constraint. But after having got the skill, they face also discrimination, Discrim and differentiation. Exactly. Treatment. So what they require mm -hmm. is that there are legal protection against discrimination. That is equal employment opportunity provision. But also, you have to go beyond that. Law by itself will not provide them access. What you require is a positive action in the form of reservation. 
that a certain amount of people from this group should find an, uh, uh, space in the uh, employment. And, and I think the, the affirmative action policy of a corporate sector recognize that. Associate Chamber of Commerce, CIA, in all this. All of them recognize, but, yeah, they, all, but they, that don't. they will give preference. Achha. So we have gone beyond the uh, equal opportunity, uh, employment opportunity provision as such. But uh, Santosh, one of the proposals is that if the private sector is reluctant, which they are, you know, as as the figures which Mr. Uh, Professor Thorat was reading out earlier, you know, very clearly shows that they're still taking only baby steps as far as you know providing this kind of opportunity. The CST youths are concerned. One of the proposal is is that at least the disinvested ventures and in all those ventures where government has some role to play in in this private sector, you know, taking loans to the banks or you know whatever the you know, in those places and in those sectors, in those industries at least, there has to be a certain amount of uh, affirmative action for the SCST youths. Is that, is, that a, is that a viable option? It is certainly a viable option. In fact, uh, let me reel off three or four ideas where the private sector can, be, can play a very positive role in this whole. You know, first of all, there are many public sector enterprises which, ha which have uh, large holdings of uh, CSR funds, right. corporate social responsibility funds, and it's 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 a, it's something that they can use for providing skill development, particularly focused on uh, SCs yeah, and STs, right. because this is you see this is part of the government, so you know the government can sort of compel PSUs, public sector undertakings, to do that. The second thing uh, within this broad rubric is the two percent of CSR. Uh, that you were talking about. So, 2% of, of corporate uh, earnings being sort of 2 allocated. 2% of the profits. Profits being allocated to CSR. Right. Now, why shouldn't C CSR include much greater skill development and vocational training than is currently happening? I'll tell you two sets of problems which our data does show us. Because we wrote the, the chapter on skill development for the 12th five-year plan and we, we, we found some really quite stunning stuff. For instance, we, we know that Indian corporates are not offering in-house training, in-firm training to the same extent as multinationals are. Right. So if they were to offer to a much greater extent than they, were, than they are currently doing, and they could use this 2% of CSR to do that, right. point one. Point two, we also know that small and medium enterprises, in particular the, in the Indian ones, are not providing apprenticeships which they are required to do, yes, even though they have been identified there is, to there do is a, so. There is, a, there is an act called Apprentice Act. There is an Apprenticeship yeah. Act of 1961, and by that act, they are actually required to. And right. what we found in, in the survey, nationwide survey that we did, that enterprises which employ more than 500 per persons, workers, are actually... Uh, 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 offering apprentices to a much greater extent than the relatively smaller ones. So, so clearly, the Apprenticeship Act already exists. And the number of apprenticeships that are available in our country in the formal sector are minuscule uh, compared to, for instance, in Germany. But, but, yes, yes. But, you know, I'm sorry to intervene. You know, you, I mean, he, uh, Santosh has made a reference to these small and micro enterprises. Uh, we have a recent survey of 2006 and 2007. And he, this is the only survey which gives the social background of the employees mm -hmm. in the micro and the small sector for 2006. And it not only gives the social background of the employees, but it also gives the social background of the employee by the social belonging of the owner. That right. is scheduled cars, scheduled tribe, OBC and others, enterprises owned by these four there, groups. There, there, is a, there is a rise in that. Yeah. No, no, no. no. I'm making a different point. Okay. You have an... Uh, owner by their social belonging mm. and the, the cause background of the employees. employees. And two points emerge quite prominently and they are very interesting. That is that the scheduled cause and scheduled tribe private enterprise employ more proportion of OBC and SC employee than the mm. OBC and the high caste Enterprises, Enterprise. the high caste and so, OBC enterprises. So there are listen, there listen to me. 60% of uh, mm -hmm. their employees and 80% of their employees are from the their own caste background. So th that now, means that this, there is a clear, this, a clear this, case for creating more entrepreneurs from this. Uh, no, no, the, there is a different case. The, the different case is that there is a case for an affirmative action policy in recruitment, right. in employment, 
in the enterprises owned by OBC and the higher caste. Higher because caste. they employ less Absolutely. compared to the... Okay. Uh, Prasad, uh, we are completely running out of time. Anyway, last year there was this very interesting uh, uh, caste census in the Indian private sector. Uh, State-wise, there was, I think there were only except one or two states. In most of the states, the, the percentage of CST population and the percentage of people employ, of CST employed, there was a yes. huge gap there. Right. Yes. Now, the last words to you. Now, how do you think this, this skill development program should proceed? That's one, one thing is that is we have to make it legalized. Okay. That is very uh, clear. Then another thing is the attitudes and the mindset of the private sector. That can't sector. be changed by law. Not a, that's that's yes. what I'm trying to yes. say. And that has to be changed. It's not the matter of skills. As uh, said, the Pana, Santosh, Santosh said, this uh, lack of skills is not only within uh, SC and ESTs, even within the, the general, sector general, itself. General. Sector itself. Right. Mainly thing is this private sector and has to be recognized. There is a there also the discrimination in hiring and those things, and the it's it's not going to affect their productivity because of the uh, that's one of the argument they are taking, that and there is without basis. There is no empirical evidence on that one. This is and a, uh, yeah. Quickly, quickly. Very Andrew. quickly. I, just, I mean, yeah. I just want to say that to the extent that there is discrimination, there is no choice but to take legal action against that. Right. Uh, but th uh, there's another but point. This, but these, we are completely run out of time, Santosh. These discriminations can be so, you know, uh, invisible uh, uh, that it is difficult to take no, legal action. No, but there is something very no, fundamental. No, no. The IIT yeah. study being sound that the scheduled cars have 65 percent less probability okay. of getting a call right. compared to the others. This is, and this same is, is the story right, with the so Muslim. We are completely run out of time, sorry. And this is a, this is a subject which will, which will need to be discussed over and over again. This is not something which can be tackled in half an hour, but we have flagged many issues and this is something which the government hopefully will take note of while they are dealing on this issue. Thank you very much. Thanks to all my guests, J.D. Seelam, Dr. Santosh Mehrotra, Professor Sukhdev Torat, Prasad. Thanks to all of you. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture same time tomorrow.